I look back at all the research we've done in our, our lab over the last 20 years anyway, the, the concept of keystone plants is probably the most important thing that, that we've done. So what I'm talking about is, is discovering that among our native plants, in the beginning when we started, started uh, looking at this, we were comparing non-native plants to native plants. And yes, uh, native plants are much more productive than non-native plants. They're supporting much more biodiversity. And, you know, they're better in a number of ways. Uh, but if you look at it a little more closely, you see that all native plants are not created equally. A few of them are doing a whole lot more uh, in terms of producing ecosystem services than the rest. Uh, and these are what we're calling keystone plants. It turns out that just 14% of our, our native plants are supporting 90% of the caterpillars that drive the terrestrial food webs uh, in most ecosystems which means 86% of our, our native plants are contributing, but not all that much in terms of supporting that, that food web. And it's not a continuum. You have these highly productive plants and then it drops off uh, pretty rapidly to plants that are only mildly or, or even relatively unproductive. So we certainly wanna focus on adding keystone plants to our, our yards. I think of, of keystone plants as the two by fours and the ecological house that we're building. They're necessary to hold up that house. They're not the only thing in that house, but they're, they're essential parts of it. What a keystone is, if you picture the Roman arch, the keystone is the stone in the middle of that arch. And if you take that stone out of the arch, the arch collapses. Well, keystone plants are essential because if you take them out of your local food web, the food web collapses. And unfortunately, that's what we've done in so many places. Uh, so we want to put those, those uh, plants that are supporting the food web back into our yards, into our public spaces, everywhere we can. Um, and then we'll diversify. Then we can add a lot, of, a lot of other plants. So there's not just keystone plants in terms of producing caterpillars. There's keystone plants in terms of supporting pollinators. And they're often not the same plants. When we're talking about supporting pollinators, we want to use plants that are best at supporting specialized pollinators. We have uh, almost 4,000 species of native bees in, in the continental US and over a third of them are highly specialized. They can only reproduce on the pollen of particular plants. When you're building a pollinator garden, you want to plant for those specialists because the generalists can use those plants as well. If we only plant for generalists and a number of non-native plants provide uh, pollen and nectar, then you're eliminating all the, the specialist uh, bees and we don't wanna, we don't wanna do that. So where do you find out where the specialist bees are? You go to uh, National Wildlife Federation website and, and look up uh, keystone plants for ecoregions. Uh, and there's a list of the plants that are best for the specialized bees in your neighborhood.